You're welcome. It's the program Total Woman on AD4 TV Radio, a program that focuses on women, the issues affecting us economically, politically, socially, all around, even to the family and our health. My name is Muti Olori, and today we are going to be doing a special feature on the International Women's Day, 25 years after the Beijing Declaration. How have we fared? Why is Nigeria not yet fully implementing the charter that we are signatory to? These are more we'll be talking on the program. And my guest is in the house. She's a serial entrepreneur, the CEO of So Agunomi. Um, she's an, a capacity builder training young people on startup businesses, small scale businesses under her foundation, the Ladi Down Foundation. She's also the public relations officer of AWITA, Association of Women in Trade and Agriculture. Please join me to welcome my guest, Sarah Ame. How, how are you? Fine, thank you. It's nice having you on the show. Thank you for having okay. me. Okay, uh, 25 years ago, I was just a young girl, just out of school. And um, I heard everything about the Beijing. I was so excited, you know, going into the world, knowing that there's a provision for me. But a child born at that time is now 25 years old. Mm -hmm. With our struggles, what is really the situation? Um, I would say for Nigeria, um, we've been influenced by cultural differences, tradition, you know, um, that has made the achieving and acquiring that status agonizingly slow. Hmm. Yeah. So we have been limited by culture, yeah. by tradition. Yes. How do we get over this? Um, we, have, we have laws on book only. Um, it has not been uh, fully enforced. Mm. We still have um, discrimination against women in, or in place of work and um, sexual harassment and all that. But it has not been implemented that do not discriminate women you know, in these areas. And so people can still your boss can still discriminate you, sexual, um, sexually harass you, and get away with it. Hmm. Yeah, so um, we're still working, we're still getting there. It's slow, like I said earlier, but um, we're working on it. Hmm. The government is working on it. It's a big one. I mean, if we talk about 25 years, we've not been able to achieve that. But something you said now that really caught my attention, and I don't know how we're going to be able to overcome that, and that is the issue of culture and tradition. If you go back, it's still patriarchy is something that is um, it's limiting a lot of women. You yes. see women themselves trying to enf enforce those laws that we say they are limiting us. Yes. And this year, UN is saying it's I am generation equality. equality. What do we do in you know, um, trying to break down these barriers that are limiting us as women? We have to just... Um keep singing the song and beating the drums of generation equality. We have to constantly hit it in the head, you know, keep, sing, keep saying it, or else our culture will still limit us. Because we, 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 culture is what we know, tradition is what we know. But um, like, uh, recently we, we, we have um, men, traditional rulers, who have come out now to say, we are in support of this generation equality. We are in support. We are with you. And most, you know, most, most um, of this law, this traditional um, hold back, is prevalent in the north. But we have uh, northern traditional rulers now coming out to say we support this cause now. So, with that achievement, with that, um, with that, uh, um, uh, what would I call it, positive um, achievement now, we can actually achieve this generational um, generation equality. It's so funny mm -hmm. that in women, we have those who are PhD holders, those who are lawyers, those who are, you know, doing great. But still, we find ourselves not, um, not in management level, not in the boardrooms, not in places that, you know, this, they say this is predominantly for men. Why, how do we handle this issue of stereotypes? saying a woman is supposed to be in the kitchen, a woman is supposed to be uh, 
uh, to be to be heard, oh, okay, to be seen and not heard. How do we go about um, bringing down these ideologies and stereotypes? We need to keep. We need to go back to our rules, our laws. Uh, um, we need to go back to our constitution. We need to fix it there. They need to. Um, the government needs to enforce it and um, make sure that women are given their place in mm. government, in the society, in the labor market, because that's where it starts from anyway. Once it is in the, you know, in enforced, it is enforced, um, we run with it. Let's talk about your organization. Okay. You train young people. What are the challenges you've seen these young girls face? Okay, um, most of them are time. I call it time poverty, you know, because um, they, are, they are burdened with the, with the chores, house, housework in the house, you know, and um, fetching water. You know, most times we go to the rural areas to um, train girls on skill acquisition and all that. But you see, most of them, can't act, they can't access it because they have to do this. They have to fetch firewood in the house. They have to fetch water. They have to take care of their younger ones. Their mothers have recruited them to take care of the home while she is also doing hers somewhere else. So they have to finish this thing before they, they, ha they can you know, uh, um, attend these trainings. Now, if we have the men working side by side, these young girls or the boys working side by side, I think there'll be division of labor. There'll be time allocated to the girls and the women, you know, to be able to assess these trainings and empower themselves. Wow. Well, um, we, we, were, we attended the um, symposium and program organized by the Ministry of Women Affairs, where the minister um, threw a lot of lights and other women spoke to us on their opinion of the present situation in Nigeria and what should be done. I'll take a break now and we would bring you some of those um, vox pop and what people are saying out on the streets. Please don't go away. Do you have a ceremony or an occasion you want covered? If yes, contact us to give you unparalleled services on our TV, radio, via YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. We also have an outdoor garden facility to cater for all your ceremonies, such as birthdays, reunions, receptions, etc. Our rates are modest and customer friendly. Please visit us at number 3, plot 833, Emmanuel Aguna Crescent, Jabi Abuja, FCT Nigeria. For more details, contact us on the following numbers plus 234-8080-874444 plus 234-90555-62444 plus 234-702-033-3444. AD4 TV Radio, reliable and credible. Learn on the go. Okay, I know you are the PR of um, the of Awita. What is the situation with women owning um, access to economic empowerment, access to land, access to to loan? What is the true situation of things? Um, women are having access to all of these things have been so 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 slow hmm. it's um difficult it has been difficult because um the, the, there are policies in place uh, the government have they will tell you they've allocated um uh, resources for that purpose um, but what to assess it has been problem has hmm. been you know an issue who are those managing are they not women managing it why is the problem you know some women have started coming up um, owning um, presiding over NGOs, so yes, women have brought their own, um, their own. They've made their own effort to make sure that they empower their fellow women. Like I know a lot of women who own NGOs, who do capacity building, who train women. You know, but aside that, uh, men, the the government, yeah, they've made uh, arrangements. For, they've made prepare. They've made um, what will I call it? The 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 smithing is there. You know. Um, um, there are so many other organizations that are empowering women, yes. Yes, I must but say. But how many women have access to it? It's just, just a few. There are just a few women. There are still a lot of women out there who need to have access to it. What is limiting us? Our, our, our culture, the home front. Wow. The, the, the men in the house, 
the husbands, and then our mentality also. The women, they need to know. Most men don't even know that they should, they, this is their right. They don't know it. So they, we need to still, you know, create that awareness that it's your right. They know, they, 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 they're supposed to know that it's your right, it's their right to be empowered mm, financially and otherwise. Mm. They should know, they should, um, they, sh they should come out for it, they should request for it. So they don't know. The facility is there, the facility but are, we are not aware. They are not aware. A lot that of women are not aware. Mm. And the ones that are aware, yes, they, they have access to it. Yes, they have, there's been, you know, a lot of progress. Wow. I mean, it's such an amazing job you're doing. And um, seeing that you're building capacity for young people, uh, if every woman find their time to do this, I think we'll be able to bridge um, the gap, you know, and then fulfill the statement that I am generation equality that we're all talking about. Thank you so much, Sarah. I appreciate your coming on the show. Total Woman was uh, part of the celebration of the International Women's Day organized by the Federal Ministry of Women Affairs. And there we met other women who shed light on the I Am Generation Equality, what they think and what should be done. We'll take a break and when we return, you will be meeting my second guest. 8th of March annually is globally celebrated as International Women's Day. And the theme for this year is I am generational equality, promoting women's rights and social justice. And so we are talking of equality of access, equality of opportunity, equality in workplaces, equality of education, equality of economic empowerment in decision-making position. Without women, you can't, you can't, you can't exist. Evil God remove women from our rib. So man was created to protect women, and they are to be protected, and we need to value them. We have not gotten out of the out of the grips of our cultures, and the women should not relent in their efforts for the personal empowerment. These are the, the empowerment, education, empowerment, acquiring skills here and there so that we will be afloat. And by the time, you know, the war, <laughs> it is the men that will eventually surrender and they cannot do it. You can see the world how it is. All right, I hope you were able to learn or grab one or two things from that um, talk. But actually, that is the feeling of people out there. My next guest is a software tester and a software developer. She's also a fashion designer. And I keep asking the question, what are you looking in a world that people stereotypically say is a predominantly male-dominated area? My guest is Ruth Ochefo. Hi, Ruth. Hello. What are you looking for there? Well, you see, that's, I think that's the problem we have. There shouldn't be... Um, difference in what a woman can do and one a man can do. So I think um, um, that's one thing that that's, we should actually try to change in our society. We shouldn't think that um, women should do this particular kind of job and then men should do that one. We should inter interchange, we should mix up, you know. In fact, these days we have men who are very good fashion designers. Before nail, nail, uh, nail technicians. Technicians. Yes. yes, makeup, makeup. Yeah. You can imagine that. So we shouldn't um, just say, oh, because this a lot of men do this thing, and, um, and software testers and software engineers and designers. We women should go and find how to so close and all of that. We shouldn't be like that. We should venture into a lot of things, and that's where I think the equality is going to start from. Or is going to drive us towards equality because if I can be a carpenter as a woman, I mean, um, equality has started already, you know. So, all right, so, um, the stereotype that women need to do this, women need to be there, is something that, like you said, we should begin to change that narrative. Yes, yes. okay. Now, there are lots of young people who want to dare. But well, like I discussed with my other guests uh, earlier on, culture, tradition, religion is quite is limiting the women. 
And in Nigeria, we have laws on papers, on, 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 on paper written there what to do, but the implementation is a problem. How do you think we should begin to go about gradually um, um, bridging the gap? Well, I'll just say one thing. Um, I think it has to start from individuality. As a person, you should be, you should aspire to achieve a lot of things. Do not just sit down and say, oh, because the society says this, I should just, you know, hold myself back. I think we should be more ambitious as women. Okay. Yes. We need more ambitious women who would, you know, who would set a goal and do anything, well, not anything, but what? Do anything to achieve that particular thing. Yeah, but that is when people begin to say, oh, feminist. It's well, feminist. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it matters. They, they, they want to dare. They are but we can't, we can't change things if we keep complying, complying, complying to stuff like that. What people would say. I don't think that we will move forward if we listen to what people will say. We should just work on ourselves and say, this is what I want to do and I will do this regardless of what anybody says. And then we can now become, we can now start recording higher, you know, um, percentage, percentage on achieving these goals, these equality goals. So women need to first of all believe in themselves, know that they, they have the ability and the capacity to be whoever they want to be. And then when they do that, how do we begin to get the support, the policies, um, implement those policies that are on book? that are written down, how do we begin to um, see to the implementation of those laws so that we, those, any woman with an ambition will not be afraid if family doesn't support you, you know you can still go on to achieve. Well, yeah, I, I, I think that um, if these organizations, NGOs and um, the bodies that are fighting for this equality, if we all have one voice, hmm. one goal, which is, uh, you know, we, we're singing the same song. Yes. I, I believe that it's going to go farther than when different um, people are coming up with different things. So I think we should all just focus on one thing, to achieve one thing at a time. You know, like um, if we're talking about... Um, like this year now, we're talking about, about generation, generation I and generation and equality. Gen yeah. Yes, so we should realize as, yeah, as loud right. as we can. More mm. awareness, mm. more voices, mm. more people, you know, talking about it. And I'm sure it, it's going to hit hard. And, you know, obviously we're going to start getting results. And then also mentoring. Like this generation, the generation that are um, on ground right mm. now, we need to mentor more young younger ones, you know, so that when this present generation fizzle out, the younger ones can take it up and, you know, run with it as well. So when... You, you know that's one thing we're really lacking in our system? Yes. Mentoring. Mentoring. That's why you find we still recycle the old ones within the system as yeah. if the new one, the, the, the younger generation do don't know anything. Yes, yes. That's one thing we need to do. We need to also focus on the mentoring. You know, let the, young, let the older ones, you know, Mentor the younger ones. I mean, they're not going to be there forever. Mm. And these ones are coming up. What would they do if they are gone? So they have to, we have to focus also on mentoring mm. a lot. And then these things will help us achieve at least a bit of this. All right, before I let you go, okay. I want you to give a young... We're saying generation equality. Yeah. Meaning that even as women fighting for women's rights mm. and girls' rights, we also need to step up. Mm -hmm. and break up. Mm -hmm. For any young girl watching you right now, what would it, especially looking at your experience, and I'm sure that you had, um, in as much as you had people who supported you, we still had people who frowned at the fact oh, yes. that, oh, yes. hey, oh, what are you doing now. here? Mm -hmm. They try to make things difficult for yes. you to be able to achieve it because where you are, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really happy to meet you because a lot Thank of people you. think this Thank is uh, male dominated. Mm -hmm. What would you tell that young girl? Well, I'll first start with um, we should be supporting of each other as, as young ones, as young women. I know that a lot of young people, especially women, don't support themselves to an extent. You know, they, you see them beefing them, use the word beef, 
within each other, you know, and with that kind of mm. thing, you can't get results. So let us support each other. Let us help each way wherever you're, you're um, I mean, ha you've achieved higher than the next person, help pull that person up. As women, I know men don't really have that problem, but women, mm. we do. And that's one thing we should work on. So let's support each other. Let us help each other grow. And then at the end of the day, we're going to have an amazing society that we would benefit from. Yeah, well, amazing society where yeah. everything will be equal. Everything will Women be will have the opportunity yes. to sit down on the table to talk about peace, to talk about justice, Excellent. talk about unity. Oh, yes. uh, because we cannot be the epitome of uh, reproduction and re re uh, free uh, creation mm -hmm. and then we are left behind when it comes yes. to nurturing yes. those things that we have oh, created yes. yeah. all right so yes. i'm i'm really excited having you on my thank show you. and you. i want to wish you the best but i, I are you mentoring young people do you have any kind of project yeah actually working yeah, on? i there's a project project we're working on right now because you know where i as where i um, learned studied um software testing when I returned, I discovered that that's not really in society. Like, we don't do it. The developers here, they test your softwares, you know, which is not supposed to be so. So I'm actually working on a project where I can also raise young girls like me, teach them to do these things, software testing, and then it will become a big thing in Nigeria, which is it, it isn't right now. Very soon, it will be something that, you know, every girl, who's interested will be proud to do. I hope you get all the support. I just hope so. Too. I, I hope you so. got yeah. Because my last yeah. get said, the funds, are, uh, they are there, but a lot of women don't know how to access. Yeah. But I hope that anybody watching us right now who has access to some of this funding, please come out. Let's put our hands together to see how we can support projects, ideas that will lift women and the girl child. Yes. Thank you so much, Ruth, you for, for being my guest. Thank you. Okay, so that is all for our special features of the program Total Women. It's all dedicated to celebrating and commemorating the International Women's Day with the theme, I am Generation Equality, Realizing Women and Girls' Rights. I hope as a man, you will be the he for she, supporting women, encouraging them to live their dreams, so that together we can have a society where everyone is treated in fairness, women are paid equally as men because they have the same energy and efforts that they put in their work. All right, so this program will be coming your way on AD4 TV radio. Please watch out for it. Thank you for staying with, tuned with us. My name is Mute Olori and I will see you on another edition.